And we have Seven four, years. five tracks. Uh, some of them relate to the, the recent news in the economy, um, downgraded standards and fours. Uh, the announcement by the Federal Reserve that they're gonna hold rates at the current mark until 2013, uh, which has never been said or done before in terms of them coming out and saying for two years, we're not gonna raise the rates. Um, if you remember from my forecast, if you remember sort of the PowerPoint that I did on the housing market, and I pointed out that four years ago, John was predicting that there was a really big housing market collapse, and you can actually go to the minutes of meetings in 2007, where we were talking about there's a value problem that we're gonna have if this actually is a bust and that value problem has showed up and it's gonna probably be here for a long time. The recession actually ended June of 2009 in terms of the official ending of the recession. The argument that you hear now is that we have a new normal and an argument that I make is that it's, if you think we're going back to a normal period, we're not. What we're going to is a different period and it's going to be smaller I think you're going to see smaller government, smaller organizations, smaller family budgets. I think everything get, get contracts. So I talked about the great contraction, and I gave you a link if you wanted to link to a, an article that was written, and now there's a lot of people that are talking about it. We actually started talking about it here three years ago, and it was a discussion about what happens if values start to fall, and what happens if property tax doesn't generate the amount of money that we think it will. So here's sort of the two graphs that you've seen before. This is building permits issued in Johnson County, single family residential, uh, 2001 through 2011. And by the way, that curve, that, that line in 2011 is starting to dip back down. And it's dipping down, back down simply because we have housing capacity in terms of things that are already built uh, that people can't sell. And there's a group of people that can't buy. And so a lot of housing just sets. Um, in terms of new housing, multifamily, we're seeing some multifamily that's being built, but single family residential just isn't. If you can find, if, you, if, you, if anybody's issuing lots of permits, it's in strange places for different reasons. But shouldn't you be optimistic, Mike, and think people are not building new, they're all moving to already existing housing? Well, the problem is the, you have a third of the market that's under on the mortgages, so they can't. So a third of the people can't move third of the people don't want to move, so you're stuck with a third of the people that maybe could, but are opting not to. So there's just really no movement in the housing market. What qualifies for a building permit? They come in and actually seek a building permit to build a house. Okay. And we, on average, if you even go back before that, we were just clicking along there for a long time between three and 4,000 in Johnson County, probably for 10 years. And now we're at 1,000 and actually below the 1,000. They can't go any further south than the South Pole right now. In terms of building, oh, oh no, there's a lot of vacant lots that aren't in the far south of Johnson County that just aren't being built on Western Shawnee. Uh, they're Western zoned Lansing. residential. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. They're right now. They're set. Yeah. So. There's they're sets platted in Johnson County. Sixteen thousand platted single family lots. Really. Not built on. Sixteen thousand. Yeah. <laughs> How long would it take? <laughs> at this rate too. And some of it is already built infrastructure. Gardner has probably an area that has 600 platted residential with all the streets, sidewalks, street lights, stormwater in, and no homes. We're fortunate that we're built out. So you get to the next slide. This is what's happening with values in that dip. We came up and now we've started back down, we started to trend back down. And so there's a 10 to 15% loss and the average value of homes sold, that's new and used. So this is the average values. And the property tax aligns with that, correct? Right, it goes <laughs> down. And so what happens over time is that if these trends continue, uh, you can expect to collect less in property. Property taxes? Rates have to go up. That's what they're doing. Why not county assessing? All their homes. Yeah. yeah. Their rates are so much higher so than ours. I take you to the next slide. 
as long as assessed values are going up, and they're going up at a rate that's greater than inflation, you can hold your mill steady, and you're always collecting enough money to cover for the effects of CPI. So here's a cumulative percentage of assessed values in CPI. And then I projected it out starting in 2012. And what you see is this gap that gets developed over time. CPI outstrips your increases in values. As your CPI outstrips your increases in values, you now have a double of a bad effect. Because that means your housing values are falling at a rate that don't account for the increased cost that the consumer price index generates in almost any good service or product. So now you're collecting even, even less, and the rates that I'm using here, the CPI rate that I used was 1.9%, uh, so that is not a steep rate. And the, lo the housing loss rate is 3.5%, which by the way is the average over the last four years. So to simplify, you could say you could overlay this with our budget and expect that our red is our expenditures, which would continue to go up with CPI, and blue is our property tax revenues, which would be expected to go down for those assessed values, and it continues to add a gap right in out years. Right. So then you get to the next slide where I put in, I went back to 2007. I said if you collected a dollar of property tax in 2007, the assessed value that existed. So in 2007, a, a buck, a, you, you generated a buck of property tax. Now start overlaying CPI and the effect of declines in property value. So in 2012, by the way, you're getting 75, 75 cents on the dollar, what you collected five years ago. And as you get out over time, you get close to half that using very conservative CPI rates, 1.9%, and very conservative fall in value rates. The rates that I've used to fall in value, that 2017 number, looks like 2001. And in right, right now, today, our value, which was on the very first slide, is $119,000, or $119 million in assessed value, citywide. And in 2002, our assessed value was about $114 million. So It's gone up $5 million in 10 years. Yeah, well, it actually was at 138 and it's gone down to 119. So if that plays out, what you see is that property tax, the only way you generate the same amount of property tax re revenue in 2017 is to double it. And so you'd have to double what we collect now, and let's say the debt service portion fell off, so you have 11.03. You'd have to, your mill has to be 22 and 17 to generate the same amount of money. Do you know, does anyone know offhand property what our property tax, total property tax collections in 2008 were? I don't have it on this one. Any guess, Laura? No, I well, if it, was, if it was $2 million, yeah. what you're saying is if this plays out by 2017, <coughs> it we'll be collecting $1.2 million in 2017, whereas we were collecting $2 million in 2008. Right. That's real dollars to this city that right. the impact on budget correct is what you're trying to tell us correct <coughs> and and the problem that you have is we all got used to this <laughs> and you can go back over time so if you had a mill of five back in the mid 90s your, your values were going up at a rate starting in the after reappraisal in 1989 which showed up in 1990 but if you just held your mill or increased a little bit, you were always beating CPI because assessed values were climbing. Assessed values in 1990 were 71 million. So from 1991 to 2001, went from 71 to about 110, 114 million. So, and those times aren't, and it's getting people to understand those times aren't coming back. You're going to get into a period of like this for a period of time. And I think the Federal Reserve basically sent you the signal yesterday. Everybody, if you weren't paying attention, we're going to hold rates artificially low for two more years, and we hope that helps. And last week, Fannie Mae set the record for the lowest 15-year mortgage rate in its entire recorded time. What was it? Uh, 3.25 for 15 years. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so um, those things, we've had these low rates, and we can't generate but single family residential 
building permits. We can't generate any activity within the housing market and sustained activity. Um, and so it's a new it's a new time. It's going to be a new time in all of the governments that we work in. Um, then I'm going to take you to a chart that will impact this. And you just saw the first shots fired over the last month. And this is Social Security. And it's something that 1961, which is a great year over here, <coughs> was 3%, the contribution rate for both employee and employer. Between 61 and 91, we went from 3%, our 3% contribution to 7.65. And in 1991, we just figured all was fine. So for the last 20 years, we have not changed the contribution rate for Social Security. But, but that's actually each you need to double to get employer right. and employee, so the gap right. gets even worse. Yeah. And so what happens is, had we continued this, and by the way, there was never a period of more than five where they didn't adjust the Social Security contribution. Uh, but then we got out of here for the last point, we haven't touched it. And I will tell you, it's this <laughs> that's killing Social Security. Had we maintained, and by the way, there's recessions in here, but we continue to increase the contribution rate. Why hasn't it gone up? Good question. Anymore. Because the feds can't do a job. Why hasn't it gone up anymore? <laughs> I left that for you to, to say, John. Well, simply because you're getting up into the upper bracket money now, they're going to have to pay more. Right now, it's at 103000 right? Oh, this is a different issue. No. You're, you're talking about the cap yeah. to which it's applied. Yeah. This is the actual so rate it's applied. It's, 85% of the people don't ever get there. Yeah. Some years so, ago, I went and fought that up in Washington. So, and I asked them what maximum was. They can't tell me. I tried. I went to Congress people and everybody else. What's maximum payment? They said, we know what minimum is. <laughs> I said, I don't want minimum. I want maximum. What's maximum payment? We don't know. So. As we go forward, somebody's going to figure out. They've already figured out. They already know what needs to happen. You have to get into a contribution line like that. And once you do that, and let's just say somebody said we have to go from 7.65 to 10%, knowing that our payroll is about 3.8 million, our 4.2 to 4.4 million, um, understand 1%. I mean, just start looking at what the numbers are. You have to start finding a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And I, I could lay capers contributions and it looked the same where they flattened them out. And we could have avoided many of the problems that we're in now had we continued to increase the contribution rate. And like John says, we've artificially capped it. And had we done a couple of things in combination, it wouldn't be nearly as bad as we did. The problem is you have to make up for this twenty years. And at some point it's going to show up in our budget. It will show up in our budget. It will show up in your personal budget as well because your, your contribution rate, if you're employed, will have to increase in order to fund this. The demographics, there's no way if you looked at this and given the demographics of, of our country that we should have stopped increasing the contribution. There's just no way. Now, now we, somebody's going to have to pay for it. What's the, the significance of 1991? No, I didn't. Well, this is likely. I mean, this the last raise just came out of the, the dole. Um, who was it? Dole on the, It was '86. The the, ski, the grand plan to uh, save Social Security. Security. Yeah. The last increases probably came out of that bargain, and they <coughs> didn't go past '91. Would be my guess. I can't remember who dole worked. Should have put a lock on that box. Bush Bush what they should have done. Instead of letting it put it all that damn Bush I O U's. Bush two. But the last increases would have come out of that remission. So Greenspan. These, but it's Congress more than else. Overlay this, overlay capers on this. It looks the same. These are the same issues. Um, a lot of this has to do with being responsible and trying to you know, communicate to the American public. Either you reduce the benefits that are out there or you increase the contribution. In our case, you're going to have to do both if you ever want it to kind of self-level. But as you watch them, I, I, they, in their debt talk, they would not even talk about Social Security. And that doesn't go away. I mean, I hope everybody, I mean, it's coming back. You reduce, if you reduce it, 
you're going to have the same thing on, on this country that you got going on in Britain right now. <laughs> so that's just some information as you think forward and some of the things that I put into the that budget letter that I proposed that I think you have to consider just looking at where we are today and understanding we're not going to go back to the 1990s and the early 2000s. Our economy will not look that way. I've highlighted things in yellow. Um, number three actually was I was supposed to take out, but I wanted to make sure that I got the seal of approval of taking it out. <laughs> I could say that you were presumptuous and put it in there because you figured it'd go through. It just didn't. Yeah, so I think we took this out once before. Right, but I just wanted to. And when you say I. <laughs> the big I. <laughs> Speaking in the royal tongue. Right, and so. See, now you're pulling back. One, one, is, one is a policy that we have that you should always strive for. And even in the current economic condition, we need to always strive to build our fund balances because things could get worse. Or things can happen in your community that you have to react to. An example, ice storms, tornadoes, things that all of a sudden require a lot more capital to be available for a short period of time. Uh, place before voters a one quarter cent sales tax. That was number eight on your agenda. 16.66%, if you remember, we have that 15 million funding pie. Mm -hmm. And then we have another 15 million that we're going to raise from outside sources. So if you look at what the transportation utility fee is of a percent of 30 million, it's about 16.66%. Uh, Dave or Mike, point of order here, are you wanting Mike to be able to go through the whole thing and then get feedback from council, or do you want us to get feedback as he walks through each other? I'm okay with either format. I have to defer to you and Mike to decide which one you You, should, you can ask questions now. So, and so there's 15, so we can go one to 15. You have to do them in that order? We have to do them in order? Makes it easier. I have to be quiet for 14 of them. <laughs> but I'm assuming that always trying to generate fund balance so that you have a rainy day fund is a good thing. Yes. And an example would be that it helped us during sure. this last one. As relates to quarter cent sales tax, I simply try to define what the transportation utility fee was if you passed a quarter cent. How much would that make up? I tried a couple times to say if you, if you want to consider reducing it, so that's not in here. No, I noticed that. I will stop you on number two and I'll jump in. I saw this 16, I saw this language and I, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's period. confusing. I it is confusing. We can't, we can't hold ourselves that we know it's going to be that percentage. If you're going to put something, you need to estimate it. And the methodology you used to get to a 16.66 number has so many assumptions underneath it. It does. I think we would crucify ourselves. Can we just take it out? Yes. Please do. That's easy. I'm guessing three's gone. Yeah, three's right. gone. Yeah, I can read this well. <laughs> uh, four is what we have to do in order to meet our debt service requirements. So that's just the number. That's good. Yes, you, thank you. Before you move off to number four. I, again, I did not like the language in the first sentence. It doesn't really say anything to me. I thought we talked about this in the last month. In fact, it might have been last week, and if I remember correctly, the CDC. We talked about, it was last week, the CDC, <coughs> we were talking about the stormwater utility rates. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the fact that right now the stormwater utility rate does not cover all the debt service, and that That's we right. have to pull out a general fund to cover the remainder. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I, I know I feel this way, I thought other council members felt the same way, that we did not like the idea of dipping in general funds to cover that debt service, but that was the best option we had, we felt, today. We also know that we would hope, well, we went and financed everything out so it pays if nothing happens. But if something does happen, we would expect a payment for some of that debt to go down, thus relieving the need to go to the general fund. Correct. I would like to see language in here that reflects that sentiment that the general fund is being used to cover the stormwater debt 
and you, you can figure out the right language to, to capture that sentiment from the council that as soon as you know, possible or as soon as potential revenues come from projects that we would in this practice and even possibly look at repaying the general mm -hmm. fund for the money that should come out of it to pay to us a debt. Mm -hmm. So well, what about the first sentence? Can't we eliminate it? It's kind well, of that's, and yeah, I agree I mean, with you, Susie. I don't like. I don't. I don't. Actually, I don't really want to eliminate it. What I would say is that the council wants to eliminate the practice of using the general fund to pay for capital improvements. We want to get away from that period. We keep, the only thing that we're still doing today is this debt service, and so that's why. If it, you know, Susie, but I agree as it's written today. If if I would not want to leave that in there. You want to clarify what I said? <laughs> no, I just. <laughs> So what would you propose the language be? I would propose that we make a statement that the general fund is not the tool we want to use to pay for capital improvements. Something to, you know, let might clean this up, but something to that effect. Recognize that in 2012 budget we have 500000 coming out to pay for debt service. Uh, once payments come in from outside so sources allowing us to pay down some of that debt, That's we stop. That's a paragraph. Well, we well, Mike will clean this yeah, up. I know what you're saying. Go on. Mm -hmm. We will stop. We intend the first to stop. Repayment this goes back to general fund. We intend to stop this practice and consider repayment to the general fund. So, something to that effect. Mm -hmm. It gives. It just it clarifies our intent. If that is indeed our intent. Okay, I don't want to paragraph. So no. Try to do that ten words or less. <laughs> ten words or less, Mike. You got it. <laughs> All right. Don't use general fund resources, and when we get money in, pay ourselves back. Well said. That's Item simple. number five. That's easy. <laughs> so is what what are the easy? slight modifications over the next three fiscal years? Uh, because we budgeted two hundred and five thousand dollars, Laura Smith. Yeah. Uh, we actually have needs that exceed that, but we only have so much money to spend and still generate fund balance. So we would spend more if we could, but that's confusing. Yeah, again, I don't like this attempt to maintain. This is this says nothing to me. As a council, if we're going to have a resolution that says what we want to do, let's be more specific. Yeah, in my opinion, we're either going to do it or we're not. You know, we either say we're going to maintain it because we think it's important. We'll take out the attempt to yes, you know, take maintain, it. maintain. But I'm not sure, Mike. Is, Mike may tell us that right now the budget doesn't allow us or to strive maintain. to, or something. So that's that's the, you know, that's why I used attempt. So, in effect, what you're telling us is right now we're not maintaining the schedule. That's what this language is saying. Right. And you're, at, in, as a council. Well, what's your definition of maintain? I mean, you know, you can. Well, st staff has given us a schedule that they, I believe, that I, they feel is important to maintain the equipment we have in the city. Right. And that these are the years we need to pay for this stuff. And right now that schedule is not fully funded. Correct. And who's to say I, that we won't I see number five as a goal rather than. Something that says, um, and that and there's not a year I've been on the council where we haven't slightly revised or modified mm -hmm. the replacement plan. Well, there's a difference between revising, which I completely agree with you. We have to advise it every year based on you know estimates or estimates. This is talking about fully funding whatever those revisions are. And right now we're not fully funding. And one interpretation could be that's our goal. And you know, majority of council. How about based, that? That's why I like the word attempt in there because this is a goal for us. And but my problem is that I don't. We have to maintain our and equipment. Let's find another word for attempt. Strive. 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 Well, okay. But, uh, you, you try. You Strive. Can, <laughs> what I'm, you know, we need to. I, I would like to see us be more clear to the citizens on what we're doing and not doing. If we're not going to maintain it, let's say in there that we can't maintain it until projected dates. I personally think we need to maintain it. We need to find the money to maintain it. That's kind of where I'm arguing there. But if the rest of the council doesn't want to maintain it, let's say we're not going to maintain it. Follow the schedule. Let's yeah. be honest with the citizens. Well, but well, well, wait a second. I understand fair, your point, fair. but I mean, let's stay on the reservation, all right? Fair, I mean, there is enough. no intent here to mislead anybody. With the way it's currently written. I'm, I'm not suggesting we are trying to mislead, and I apologize. I, my comments could have been taken out of line. All right. Citizens have communicated to us that they feel we're not as transparent <coughs> and clear. Whether those are true or not, that's some people's perceptions, and I'm just trying to make sure we're addressing those to the best of our ability. Okay. John? 
explain to me what slight modification means. Between one and a hundred. <laughs> slight modification means that if we were to, to try to do everything that's in our schedule, it would cost us about $75,000 more a year to do over the next three. So is there a way that we can take that 75000 and slide it out into year four by picking elements that could go a little bit longer? Um, so it's just the degree that's at hand. It's really not that you're not going to maintain it. You may have another emergency that comes up in two and a half right, years. Exactly. So how about this? Take city, that out. City Council should work to fully fund the 10-year vehicle equipment replacement schedule. Schedule, period. Yeah. That sounds wonderful. In, do we have a percentage of how much of it in 2012 is being funded? Uh, we can get that, but we have the top of our head. Could, could that be put in the 2012, we've only been able to fund it at X percent? Yeah, we could do that. Any yeah. other comments or feedback on item five? Debbie, don't rev me up. I mean, there's a lot of questions, and some of them are coming from you. We're moving as fast as we okay, can. Okay, right. got it. <laughs> Item number six. <clears throat> What's the 50? Give me, define the 50% rebate on the solid waste utility fee. Okay. $10.09 a month, and so $121 a year. So you get back $60.52. Okay. Those that are in Canal. Yeah, those were in the And what percent of the HUD guidelines are those? Didn't we raise those? We lowered them. We lowered them. We lowered I mean, them. Well, yeah, we, lowered we them. modified the schedule. Yes. We're giving out <laughs> sort of less than we have in the past. Okay. Okay. Sounds like agreement. Mm -hmm. What's a cup? Consumptive user fee. Okay. Uh, item seven, I think, is pretty straightforward. Something that's been practice of ours for many uh, years. How many raises have they had now in the last five years? <clears throat> on health insurance contributions? Yeah. It's um, been one and a half percent since 2004. And that's the way go. It, okay, it's been one and a half percent, and we're going to raise it one and a half, so it'll be three percent. Well, we mm -hmm. started with five percent, and then we've done it one and a half percent every year since mm -hmm. 2004. Okay. Uh, now, Employees, some of them I know, haven't had pay raises for two or three years, right? Or more. Or more. Well, you know, someplace along the line, we need to have to quit that and call up some money or get some raises someplace. Well, you, have, you have to look at the yeah. alignment of how I mean, much our insurance has gone up, though, too. I do look at that. But we still got, I mean, these people are working to make a salary. And we keep raising their benefit rates on everything and not giving them a, an increase in salary. Well, and one of the reports that Mike put out was that some of our employees keep taking home less and less and less. That's right. And, and uh, you know, it, uh, it's going to take its toll sooner or later. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. it is. And it's already taken an attitude with a lot of them, I think. My humble opinion. In, in local government, I mean, there's, if there are raises out there that are one percent, one and a half percent, they're not large numbers. And then the problem that you have is um, in the new economy, I think everybody's going to have to get used to the fact that we're going to be in constricted salary growth for a while. There's just not. There's not anything generating growth in the economy. There's no growth in the economy. There's really no growth in income. And with the unemployment rate, right. you know, it's... It's not... We, we, we love our employees, but some entities can say, you know, well, why do we need to give you a raise? I got somebody else out there that's willing to do it for the same amount. Or less. Or less. So... Mike, on number seven, if you could add in, as reflected by council policy established with the 2004 budget or something like that, but okay. to give context for those who may not be aware of this. But I concur with you, John.
Any other comments on item seven? Okay, number eight. This is one that I threw out there. If you believe the two lines in which values continue to decline, CPI continues to increase. Um, if you don't start creating revenue sources that match up to what expenses are, and it's a decoupling of the budget, then understand that that mill rate just, it goes, it's twice whatever the number is today in five or six years. Well, that sounds like you're eliminating the mill. Uh, yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I'm suggesting, mm -hmm. that you switch from using a, a mill direct. rate to a, a fee-based rate where you can actually capture the cost of the expense. You know how much street lights and traffic signals cost. Okay. You know how much. And that way we don't see these growing gaps in out years. Right. And you're, and you're chasing them, because by the time you get your values, they could, they, could, they could be going down as you're talking about it, as they have the last two or three years. Is any other city on a fee-based level? No, you have some, um, but don't they not have too many. Rates? In the state of Kansas, do they not all have mill rates? Yeah, but they also all have mass stormwater utilities. They all have, start to have solid oh, waste see. utilities. Okay. Um, if they have electric utilities, they have large payment load taxes that they charge as a part of yeah. their electric rate. Mm -hmm. They capture money. So you had a question? I do. Are there any state distributions that are linked to the mill levy? I mean, in the past, it was. In the past, there was. Yeah. Not so, anymore. is there any left? There's none left. No. So that won't affect us if we go down to a zero mill no, the way it used to. <coughs> With the relation to what the state infrastructure yeah. is. No, not from the state. Because it did used to be just state. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so the county revenue sharing was calculated. Yeah, all LBTR kinds of stuff. That way. Yeah. Um, portions of. Um, LAVTR on personal property, mm -hmm. all of them had a... It was population times mill levy times something right. else, tell you how much you got. Right. And the other problem that we're going to have is if uh, Governor Brownback continues with his shift from income tax to sales tax, your sales tax gets eroded at the same time, which he seems to have the votes to do. Is, is there a way for you to put together just a small schematic of the pros and the cons to going to a non-mill and how that would affect, affect an average taxpayer or with a standard house of 150000 mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be some of the research and proposed options you provide over the next few years, I assume? Right. Right. Okay. You're pretty cutting edge. So we could talk about and get to a user fee type thing. Mm -hmm. Number nine. And number nine, I need to add another sentence because, in addition to the solid waste utilities, we also have those drainage district uh, rates, which were in the public hearing tonight. So we'll add those into this section. We have the utilities and those drainage district. It's very unique. Drainage district. So drainage district number one, number two. That was Rock Creek, wasn't it? Yeah. Any comments on nine? Yeah, real quick. Dave, I'll just reiterate. I won't go into it. I'll reiterate my uh, opposition to solid waste utility fee and how it was set. But unless there's others that want to discuss it, I'll just leave my comments from last week uh, on the record. But, all right. John? Okay. All this will pertain to the 211 in the 211 or 212 budget. Mm -hmm. 212 budget. Yeah. So that's the 212 budget. Okay. So this here, if we maintain all this current stuff and all these resolutions, I'm sure someplace is in there. Is that TIF come underneath there with the resolution? Uh huh. So then if this is approved, we still then can't next year say we want to get rid of the TIF. Yeah, you can. Tough. 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 Yeah, you can. I got a better word for it. <laughs> and one of the reasons that I, last week, and I think it's important if you go towards a fee-based budget that you actually set out the rates 
and you consider them separately in a resolution. And if there comes a point you say, you know, we've collected enough money, we have enough to do transportation utility fees, you just adjust it in that resolution and you change the rate or eliminate it.